Yo, what's going on, peeps? As promised, got the review for the games of this last few days, but the Tottenham game and Everton game, but we'll get into that in a bit. I've got the preview for the weekend's games dropping after this, so look out for that. But it's now 10 or 1 p.m. But I've got to go to work, so I'm going to get this video done so I can go to bed because money I have to make. So let me get this done, get them uploaded, then hit the sack. Right. And this is going to be the last video of 2020. So hopefully 2021 is going to be bigger and better. But till then, we move. First up, Palace 1, Leicester 1. Now, even though it was 1 1, for mutual, it was, a, it was a good back and forth. Draw, fair result. Palace had the first half, Leicester had the second. So. I think it draws fair and both teams can't be too hard on themselves with that. They both played well, defended well, attacked well, anything you expect. So I'm not mad at that. I think goals from Zaha and Harvey Barnes again back on the score sheet. He's on fire so far this season. Scored against United as well. But again, Fair result, no complaints there. Chelsea won, Villa won. This too was a good game. If you're a mutual and a Villa fan. But if you're a Villa fan, you're probably a bit peeved that you only got the one point and not all three. Because Aston Villa were by far the better team. Looked much more better going forward. Chelsea's best player again, Pulisic. He was the only one looking lightly. He was the only one doing any transitions, trying to break and get out the Villa back line and actually create anything other than that. He didn't really do anything. And Frank Lampard again. It's going to be a long, a long couple of weeks for him. He's got Man City next at home. And all three points are a must. Anything less. Roman Abramovich don't play. He would just flick the switch and he'd be out of here. So he better get his boys paying for him because they don't know that they're paying. Timo Werner can't hit a barn door. He's been poor. Havertz poor. So if your attackers ain't doing nothing, goals ain't going to come. And that's what, that looks like where they're at right now. And of course, Everton and Man City were supposed to play that day, but on the Monday, but that was postponed due to coronavi coronavirus. So that got postponed. So anyone involved, I hope you're well and wish you a speedy recovery. Because this COVID ain't a joke. And if it's a new strain of it, then it's definitely not a joke. And the Premier League said they're not going to cancel any games and postpone the league. They believe in their regulations and what they're doing, so it's going to continue. So the games this weekend should be going ahead as scheduled. Next up, Brighton nil, Arsenal one. Now this is a shock. So I was expecting Brighton to actually turn up because since Brighton's been in the Premier League, Arsenal have not beaten Brighton. It's ever been draws or Brighton's been getting the upper hand and I was expected the same since they're at home and their first home win of the year was against Arsenal so I thought they'd close the year out the same but they were poor a couple of half chances nothing really really special didn't take them like as it came off the bench was on the pitch for maybe 24 seconds had a chance good finish if I'm being honest can't be mad at it a good goal is a good goal, River scores it and it was definitely a good goal and Saka again, man in the match again, the youngsters are showing the oldest how to play football and leading by example which is if I was a senior player I'd be a bit embarrassed that I've got these kids out here putting in work 
and I'm here bumming around, but it's not my club. So I guess players now don't really care, don't have that fire. So it's whatever. And Arsenal come out winners in that one, and they've made it two and back to back. Next, Burnley won, Sheffield United nil. Now this was a shot because I was expecting them. It was still a boring game. Don't get me wrong. Like I had it on and I totally forgot it was on. That's how boring it was. But Burnley come out with the winners. Ben Mee with the header. I think Brewster had a chance beforehand that he probably should have put away, but he didn't put him away. You don't put away your chances. First one, number one, you don't win. And number two, the other team can go on and score, and you regret that miss. And that was the case for Sheffield United, who are bottom still with two points. I think they've lost like 14 games. And it's looking very bleak for them. If they stay up, I'd be super, super surprised. Everyone around them has to have bad results for them to even have a remote chance of staying up. So at the moment, they're out of here. And it's kind of unfortunate because they're not actually paying bad. They're just not getting anything. Again... Luck's not on your side and sometimes you need it and right now they ain't meant that leprechaun to give them that luck. Next, Southampton nil, West Ham nil. Now this game was an absolute joke. Now, remember they were making you pay 14 95 for pay-per-view so you could watch your team play? If I was any of those fans paying 14 95 to watch that crap, I'd be asking Sky for a refund or the club, anybody, because it definitely weren't worth the money and next time I'll probably try to stream it because if I'm going to get that, I'd rather watch it for free than pay all that money to watch. Boring football is like watching paint dry, literally. Sitting there in front of it for hours and just staring at it, watching it dry. It's not fun, not entertaining, and that's exactly what that was boring, I'm not going to spend too long on it because it was dead zombie football West Brom nil Leeds 5 now this is a shock because Leeds are a good attacking team going forward and Samuel Dice usually sets his team up defensively very well, so I was expecting a nil nil but I knew it was going to go wrong when they scored an own goal I said it's going to be a long day now. They just summed them up, and after that, they scored another three good goals. And I said three because the other goal was a deflection. Good strike from Rodrigo, but I took a deflection. And Keeper had no chance. But the other three goals Rafinha, Harrison, and who else scored? I forget who it is now, but I think it was Alioski. Brilliant goals. Superb finishes. And Aladice is having a rough time. And this might be karma for second Bilic after getting a draw against Man City. I didn't believe it at first, but now I'm just like they're getting some bad karma now. So they're going to have to pick it up. And Menu 1, Wolves 0. Now, this was not a true reflection of the game, it was a boring game. It wasn't boring, it was. Man United were boring, let me say that. Wolves were actually impressive and they didn't deserve to come out losers. They deserved at least a point, if not all three, because they were by far the better team. Man United were so slow in transition. It was only the last, what, 10 minutes they picked it up, started moving the ball a lot quicker. You can hear the touchline saying, move the ball faster, 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 but. And the best player for Wolves, Saiz. Unfortunately, it bounced off him from a Rashford shot into the back of the net and left Patricio B and he couldn't do anything. And it was it was harsh, if I'm honest. Again, they didn't deserve to lose. They deserved at least a point. So they're definitely going to be aggrieved that they didn't get anything. But let's have football is sometimes. Like Sever on your side, like Man United that day, or it's not like Sheffield United for the whole season, it seems like. And we have Spurs v Fulham, 
that was supposed to be today that was postponed due to COVID again. And again, everyone involved wish them a speedy recovery and hope they're well and their families and whatever else around them because they have to isolate and they've been in contact with family and whatever else. So I'm praying for them as well. So prayers up. And the last game of the night, Newcastle nil, Liverpool nil. Now, this was a nil-nil, but this wasn't a boring nil-nil. Both, both sides had chances, mainly Liverpool, but again, poor finishing and good goalkeeping. Carl Dar Darlow, man of the match, and deservedly, he made some big saves and sh shared on some good defending. So between the defence and the goalkeeper, they definitely deserve something. And they had a few chances, the Callum Wilson had a chance and whatever else, but they definitely deserve something at that game. And Liverpool, again, not good enough against the, the minnow teams. Last time it was West Brom with the 1-1 and now another draw against Newcastle, the first 0-0 in 74 years. So it shows you how bad it was. But if you're a Liverpool fan, but they're still top of the league. Not by much, but they're at the top. And going into the new year, and I guess that's all that matters. And they move. So that's that. That's the review for the for the few games that we had over the last few days. And this is the last video of 2020. So I won't see you to the new year, most likely. So happy new year to everyone. Wish you well and hope 2021 is better than this year because this, year, this year has been shit for us. It's not been a good year, so let's hope for better things for next year. And we can get this virus out of here and get to some normality because I think it's needed. Everyone's down and dejected and just deflated. So prayers up. Everyone stay safe. And until the next video, I'm out of here. Peace.